Put Call Parity links the price of a European call option with its corresponding European put option, subject to some conditions. I'd like to show you first an elegant way to understand why Put Call Parity even applies, and we'll do that with a synthetic forward. And then secondly, to be more practical, I'll show you the way that I memorize Put Call Parity. <laughs> Put call parity gives us a necessary relationship between the price of a European call option and the price of a corresponding European put option. In my example, the call price is $2.44. I've colored it in light blue. And the price of the European put, the corresponding European put, is $1.66. Now I have priced these according to the Black Shoals Merton. Those are in hidden rows if you want to download the spreadsheet and see how I did that. But the, my focus here is not the valuation. We don't need to do that here. I did use the all six of the classic inputs into that model. And there is a condition for put call parity to apply for us to be able to rely on it. Easy to forget this. The condition is that the call and the put are European and that they are on the same asset with identical strike price and maturities. So in my example, the strike price is $20 and the maturity or term to expiration is one year. So both of the call and the put need to have the same strike price and the same term to expiration, which they do here. If they share identical strike and maturity, then put call parity will apply. I think an elegant way to understand this is by way of the synthetic forward. So over here, I've started here a profit diagram, and I'll start with the long call, which is illustrated here in the dashed blue, blue to match this blue here. So this is a profit, not a payoff, and by profit, I mean it includes the receipt or payment of the upfront premium. And so you can see for the long call here, under the, under the x-axis is future stock prices. So at low future stock prices, that is below the strike of 20, we have here a net loss on the long call equal to the premium. That is, we, we bought the call, we paid $2.44, but it expires underwater, we don't get to exercise it, so we just have the $2.44 loss. On the other hand, if the future stock price is higher, then we start to enter into net profit territory for us. And the break even, in fact, will be, we can easily see the break even. It's $22.44 because at future stock price of $22.44, we would exercise for a $2.44 payoff minus the premium we paid of $2.44 gives us a zero profit. Okay, then I'll add now the short a short put position. So this is not buying the put. This is writing or selling the put. And its diagram here at higher future stock prices shows a flat net profit equal to the premium collected. After all, we sell the put today. We collect $1.66 at future st uh, stock prices above the strike price it expires worthlessly for our counterparty and we just pocket the premium as they say. On the other hand, if the future stock price is below the strike price, then we start to incur a net loss because our counterparty will exercise, which is to say we're obligated to pay the strike price in exchange for receiving the stock. And the break even we can also see here is gonna be at the $20 strike minus the put uh, premium of $1.66 looks like that's about $18.34 as the break even on the downside. Okay, so now this is a portfolio of only two positions, long call plus short put. That portfolio, again, it has a net profit profile as illustrated by the purple line, and you can, you can visually see why that's the case. And this is the synthetic forward because buying the call and writing the put is a portfolio that together has a profit profile that's identical to a forward. So we could say it's a synthetic forward. And our synthetic forward looks like buying the call is positive C, 
minus P because we're selling or writing the put. That's our synthetic forward. The one other thing we could add to this is, let's say instead of exercise, exercising the options in a cashless fashion, let's say instead of a cashless exercise, we exercise to hold the asset. Meaning, if the future stock price is above the strike price here, we're going to exercise the call option, meaning we're going to pay the strike price and receive the stock. Of course, our strike price in the future will be that $20, and at higher values up here, we're going to receive a, a stock that's worth more, hence the profit. But also here on the downside, if the stock, say, is down at $15, we have written a put, meaning we also will be paying the exercise price, but in this case, in exchange for the stock that's worth less. And so by adding the future strike price that we will pay under any scenario, we've synthesized here the stock position, right? This buy the call, write the put, synthetic forward, but add cash equal to strike, and we synthesize the stock. And then here we have the elegant approach, I think, to put call parity. The only difference is, well, this, okay, so this, these three are equal to S0. The only thing is my stock today uh, is present value. My call is present value. My put value is present value. So I want to present value that strike price, which is going to occur in the future, right? So I take e to the negative rt, typical action there to present value in uh, continuous compounding. And there we have this approach to put call parity that says the price of the stock is equal to its synthetic equivalent, our portfolio of buying the call, writing the put, and present value of cash to be paid in the form of the strike price. So that means that just in terms of applications now, that means we can rearrange this in any way, right? If we want to solve for the call, we do need to know the put price, but if we know the put price, then we can take stock price plus the put price that we know, $1.66, and subtract the strike price discounted at the risk-free rate, and we get the call price. On the other hand, Let's say we know the call, but we want to solve for the put. Well, then we can take the call price that we know, add the strike price discounted at the risk-free rate, and we would just need to then finally subtract the stock price, and we solve for the put price. Okay, so that's the understanding, and then I'll just flip to my next final slide just to show you if it's helpful how I memorize it. I memorize it differently. I've covered this in an old, old video of mine. But the way that I memorize it is a left hand, right hand. And on the left hand, I have call plus discounted cash, right? Here's our call plus the strike price discounted today as just discussed. Call plus discounted cash. You can see here our call price is $2.44. Our strike price of 20 discounted as $19.22 gives us $21.66. So on the left-hand side, I just remember a call plus cash, discounted cash. And on the right-hand side, I have protective put because I think that's just really easy to memorize. A protective put is when you buy a put and cover it with stock ownership. And so you can see that here is the put price of $1.66 plus the stock price of 20. It necessarily equals. So my memory mnemonic, if you will, is call plus discounted cash equals protective put. And then I rearrange the put call parity however I need it. And so these are a package that necessarily needs to equal. For example, let's say the future stock price is $25. Then what's the payoff here on my call plus cash portfolio? Well, if the future stock price is 
my call with a strike of 20, I'll be able to exercise that for a $5 gain. Plus, I'll have future cash of $20 in the form of the strike price. Is So that's $25. What will my protective put be worth? Well, my long put at $25 will be worthless, but I'll have the stock at $25. So you see call plus cash will be worth $25. My protective put will also be worth $25. And similarly, let's say the stock price goes down to $15. What happens to my call plus cash? Well, my call will be my call with a strike of 20 will be worthless to me, so that's a zero, but I'll have my cash or strike price at $20. What about my protective put? Well, my long put now at a future stock price of 15 will actually, I'll actually be able to exercise that for a gain of $5. And then I'll have the stock at $15 as well. So that also equals 20. So you see how this portfolio on the left will always equal this portfolio on the right. That's my put call parity. And we can model that with any scenario. So that's a couple of ways to look at put call parity. First, understanding it by way of the synthetic forward. And second here, with this memory mnemonic, if you will, call plus cash equals protective put. Once you've got that, you can rearrange, solve for any of the variables if you know the other three or five, if you like. If this video was helpful, please subscribe to the channel and you'll get our updates. Thank you.